Come on now, give him praise. Glory to God. With that same spirit of worship, let us ready our hearts, as I'm sure they're ready, to bring to the Lord what belongs to him. Father, thank you. Your word tells us that we are to bring all the tithe and the offering to the storehouse. Everything that we've devoted unto you, Oh, through kingdom builders, Father, that your people are so faithful and cheerful givers. Lord, we do this out of obedience, out of a grateful heart. We give you the glory and the praise, thanking you for the provision that you give. And so we bring to you what is yours, and we do it in the name of Jesus. And we say amen and amen. Come on, let's give to the king. to you collectively what has been given and father we dedicate it to you receive it as part of our worship part of our obedience father we love you we love you so very much we love your house we love souls and lord i declare what your word declares because of the cheerful givers that you would bless them and open the window of heaven so father bless them richly bless us your house for your glory i pray this in jesus name god's people say amen give it praise You may be seated. Si los vientos te obedecen, si la mar ante ti calla, porque hay hombres que dicen que tú no vives y la tierra tú la riegas con la lluvia de los cielos porque hay hombres que dudan tanto de ti es mi anhelo que las flores le dijeran a los hombres por cual mano todas ellas fueron creadas te aseguro entenderían que sin ti no existiría lo más bello que en el mundo puede haber no ves el agua fluir con la cual tú sosiegas la sed que aprisiona tu boca con la 
sombra del árbol el cual te regala descanso Pues entonces por qué te preguntas si hay un creador Si puedes ver a contar las estrellas que alumbran lo negro de un inmenso cielo Si no puedes acepta que Dios es real pues es tan grande, no se puede negar Yo sé que vive, pues lo veo en la risa del niño cuando voy pasando Al oír el bramido del mar que me dice cantando Even people. <clears throat> Glory to God. My word, can you believe this? It's already April the 4th. <clears throat> Today I I officiated a, a wedding ceremony and 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 I and I started and I said, let me fill out the uh, the marriage license before I forget, right? <clears throat> and I, I asked myself. Today's the 24th. Where that came from, I don't know. But thank God for nosy sisters. <clears throat> Gloria a Dios. Okay. Lorena and Lisa, they say, it's not the 24th. And, you know. They were like a mile away from me and they heard me. I know they were. I said, Pastor, it's the 4th. It's a, they say it's 4 4 24. Okay, well. <clears throat> anyway, I want to congratulate um, Abel and Kathy Castañeda. God bless you guys. <clears throat> I've, I can now, <clears throat> I can't say that I've never been late to a wedding because up until today I had never been late to a wedding. <clears throat> and I was 15 minutes late to this wedding. And so what I was doing, I was giving Kathy time to think it over. You know, ¿quién se quiere meter con Abel? You know, it's like, give it a second thought, you know. When I got there, they were laying hands on her, praying for her just to make some. No, no, no. Well, congratulate you. I went up, I went up to Abel right now. Congratulations, Mr. Douglas. No, I was just joking with him. I actually did. A, a, I officiated a ceremony back in the 90s, and, and I actually used, I used, quit kissing. No, I'm just playing. <clears throat> now everybody, people on this side, they're wondering, who was it? <laughs> who was it? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> Brother Pari, but that's solo? <laughs> anyway, um, I'm just messing with you guys. <clears throat> uh, it's, it's a day to have fun. Uh, and so the gentleman that was getting married, a <clears throat> member of our church and, and his wife-to-be, and he told me, he said, hey, listen, when you, here's our, our, our uh, marriage license. Uh, he says, but when you marry us and you pronounce us husband and wife, I'm going to take her name. I had never heard of that. He took her name. So, orale. I'm fine. <clears throat> and they were going to do everything legal and, you know, stuff like that. And he's changing his name to her name. License, social security, stuff like that. And, uh, and so I did. And so right afterwards, <clears throat> I hope his tias aren't looking, watching tonight. But anyway, <clears throat> afterwards, uh, 
you know, I pronounced, I always pronounce, you know, Mr. and Mrs., okay? And I used her last name. And so, da, 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 music played, everybody left. Man, the two aunts were waiting for me, Steve, in the back of the church. And, uh, I, and, and they weren't white and they weren't black. They were Hispanic. I don't know how, man. Don, shh. But I see on jalapenos, you know? And they were waiting for me. And they said, do you know what you did? Like that. They didn't just ask. They didn't ask, did you make a mistake? Do, do you know what you did? Well, there's a lot of things I've done in my life. I don't know what you're talking about. You better. I was trying to play it off. Well, you said the wrong last name. How dare you? And they went on and on. I let them talk. I let them put me down. I let them do whatever they wanted. And then I said, oh, well, I can't apologize. I said, because your nephew. I'm sorry. I, lo I was loving to wait to, to this point to tell him. I said, your nephew asked to use her last name. Number you can almost hear their faces go la 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 la. I said, but he's next door. Go talk to him. And then somebody else comes up to me and says, hey, because I sang I sang that song. El Vive. They had asked me to sing that song, and they say, hey, you sound like Jay Perez. I said, no, Jay Perez no trae nada para mí. <laughs> anyway, it's all fun. It's all fun. Second Corinthians chapter ten. Verse 3. Now, I, I want you to understand uh, in the context that Paul is writing this by the leading of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> uh, he's defending, I should say, he's vindicating his apostleship. There was false teachers <clears throat> that were coming against him. He's not a real apostle. Da, 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 da. But he also make it, makes it very spiritual at the same time, not only his apostleship, but <clears throat> what he's talking about. And so in verse uh, three, it says, for though we walk in the flesh, we, you know, we, we do live on this earth and we do walk in this body. He says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war. We do not battle. We do not fight after the flesh. In other words, we don't let the flesh take over and lead us into the, the battle it, it, we won't win a lot of people allow <clears throat> allow the flesh to take over and they go into the battle in the mode of flesh they're going to lose they're going to lose all right they're going to lose and and i hope you never do that if you have done it before i'm glad you asked for forgiveness because that's not how we walk <clears throat> We walk by faith and not by sight, right? And, and, and we don't war after the flesh. I mean, some of you are very, very uh, uh, strong and you can handle yourself in the flesh. And I applaud you for that. Whenever I need you, make sure you answer the phone. <clears throat> because, because you know how to defend yourself. You know how to take care of business. Or maybe you used to in your old life. May I say it like that? And if you were pushed and you had to defend yourself, you know how to handle that. <clears throat> okay? Because I'm never saying don't defend yourself. You have to defend yourself. Right? They're hurting your family, your wife. Your, but uh, I mean, but it's not payback. You're just defending, okay? Uh, and you know how to do that. <clears throat> but some people want to revenge everything, avenge everything. And they do it in the flesh, and that doesn't work. You'll lose. You live by the sword, you die by the sword, okay? <clears throat> and some, of, some, some people don't use uh, their fists. They don't use weapons. They use their, they use their mouth. No se caen la boca. I was going to say the other thing. <laughs> and they want to handle everything just telling people off. And, and it's not going to end up good. It's not going to. It's not going to. The Bible clearly tells us that though we walk in this flesh, we do not war after the flesh. What is Paul telling us? He's telling us, listen, there's battles to be fought. There are battles to be fought. But we got to fight them God's way, not our way. Many of you have your way. I'm going to pay back. And you're not going to, you're not going to, you may win, you may win that battle, but you won't win the war. And that's why Paul is using the word war. There's many battles within a war, okay? Now, something that he's talking about, as I keep reading, uh, he's talking about strongholds, strongholds in people's lives. Now, for a non-Christian, an unbeliever, doesn't always have to be a, a, a demon that 
has taken over a person. Please get that, okay? Some people, back in the 80s, everything was a demon. Everything was a demonic spirit. My elbow hurts. It's, it's the spirit of the elbow. Shut up, man. <laughs> and people just, just using stuff, man. <laughs> and then there was people that would, you would tell them something, and they would say, uh, yes, but, but they would say in Spanish, sí, pero. And so one friend of mine said, es el espíritu de sí, pero. They wouldn't shut up. They would always try to make excuses. El espíritu de sí, pero. <clears throat> That was really good. We're Guerrero anyway. But anyway. <clears throat> so, but even to, for the believer, the believer, if you're truly a believer, you've truly given your life to Jesus. He lives in your heart. You're filled with the Holy Spirit. A demon cannot invade because you're walking with him. Let your guard down. Walk away from him. Oh, yeah. You're, you're, you're opening some crazy doors. But, but let me tell you this. But a stronghold can get a hold of it because a stronghold will get you here. It'll get you here when you get away from the things of God. What is a stronghold, Pastor? A stronghold is a harmful thought or thought patterns. Thought patterns. People go on, on field trips in their mind. And they, they take the road, man. <clears throat> and then what the devil does is he continues to allow you to play the film over and over again. It's like when you want revenge. It keeps coming. It keeps coming. Because he wants you to... He, he, I'll tell you more about that in a minute, but he wants you to fail. That's what he wants you to do. You know, and, and if there's shame involved, man, he lets you play shame all, and guilt right there, anger right there. And that's why people sometimes can't forgive people. And the Lord has told us that we are to forgive one another, especially, especially if we're the body of Christ. And some people won't do it. Beat those that they do it. They just won't do it. And forgiveness is something that the Lord teaches us. And you know what? It is hard. Forgiveness is hard, but we've got to do it God's way. You know what, what a stronghold is also is arrogant attitudes. Thank God there's none of those here. You're right. <clears throat> Aquí también. Arrogant attitudes. They take hold of a person's thought life, and all of a sudden, the person that's arrogant, they forget, they, they, they forget they're arrogant. Everybody else knows they're arrogant, but they themselves don't know that, that they're arrogant. It just, the enemy of our soul just slips in and allows these thoughts to go. It's like whenever I gain weight, I don't see it. See myself every day, I'm not going to notice it. You know what helps me notice it? When I put on my pants or a coat, like, hey, what happened? You know, that's when I notice it. Other than that, I don't notice it. And then I'll tell my wife, man, I got I to gotta put some weight off. Man, this is crazy. And, you know, I, I won't get rid of these pants because I'm going to lose weight. <laughs> They're 10 years old. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I, I am. And, and, and what these, these uh, thought patterns and arrogant attitudes and so many more, what they do is they leave a lasting impression on people's minds and also in the heart. All of a sudden, it, we become that thought. We're being defeated by those thoughts. And although we don't know that we're arrogant, my gosh, we're living the life of a person that's only arrogant but defeated. And, and, and I'm talking about people that have known the Lord Jesus Christ. But you get away from him. You get away from him. You get away from his word. You get away from his presence and you'll end up there. It's a guarantee. It's a guarantee. Because be, what happens if you don't put oil in your car? Just don't put oil. And, 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 you know, oil lasts a long time in newer cars. But after a while, you have to check it. Say so you never check it. And at 5,000 miles, you didn't change it. And you're not going to add anything. And pretty soon, it gets so thick, it begins to burn up. And it's going to be used. And it, that motor is going to lock up. It's going to give up because you didn't pay attention. If we don't pay attention to the word of God in our lot, to the leading of the Holy Spirit, we're, we're going to lock up. We're going to lock up and say, you know what? I'm not going to church anymore. I'm not going to read the Bible anymore. I'm not going to serve God anymore. And all of a sudden, everything here is what now is mastering my life. And what am I doing? I'm warring everything that happened. I'm, 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 still, I'm, I'm still, hey, but I'm a Christian. Stop serving God 10 years ago, but I'm still a Christian, right? And so I'm warring after the flesh. A stronghold usually often starts with a wound or an experience, a hurt or a disappointment that makes, that makes our heart very fertile for, for, uh, for uh, seeds, seeds to be planted. <clears throat> When there's an offense, 
Listen, because even when you're in the word of God and, and you're serving the Lord, you'll get offended. Here's the thing. If we stick to God's word and we get offended, his very presence will heal the offense. Been there, done that. Okay, maybe I haven't been there to the extreme that maybe you've been offended, but, but at, any, at any rate, I know that this word works, okay? So if I stick to him, and if you stick to him, and we get offended, he's going to heal it up. Yes. You believe that? Amen. Uh, no, no, but some of you over here believe it. I don't know about over here. Amen. If the offense remains, here's what happens. <clears throat> here's what happens. All of a sudden, the enemy of our soul that Jesus said, be on the lookout. Be on the lookout for that, for that, for that devil. Be on the lookout. He's your enemy. We make our heart fertile for him to plant seeds of lies and betrayal and all that kind of stuff. That's what happens. See, strongholds sometimes happen because somebody tells you something that's not true about somebody else. And all of a sudden, you don't like that person anymore. And they've never crossed a word with you. You see, and all of a sudden, there's a stronghold in your life because you believe the lie. Paul was talking about false prophets. They were twisting the word of God and they were trying to take people that Paul was winning for Jesus. They were trying to confuse them to keep them away from the things of God. And so they used falsehood. For you see, a stronghold, when it comes to, to the, the, the enemy, the, the, the enemy of our soul, it's a foundation for him to be able to build big, bright, big, brick by brick an attitude in our life that will cause us to war after the flesh. Amen. You see, it, it, he, he builds. The, the enemy likes to build. He'll build a wall of lies, inaccurate stories of other people, erroneous inter interpretations of the scripture. He'll give you prideful thoughts. He'll, he'll give you distorted, distorted perceptions of who God is. And people fall for that. They fall for that. One of my favorites is when people tell me, hey, you know what? I'm saved already. I can do anything I want to do, whether you think it's a sin or not, because I'm already saved. Pues que de aquella, no? Keep living the... The, the flesh life, keep living the world life and still believe that everything's good between you and God? Oh, Pastor, now you're judging. No, I'm just using his word. You know, the Apostle Paul wrote by the leading of the Holy Spirit, he said that as a pastor, I shouldn't judge people outside of the church. Okay? But gives permission for a pastor to judge the people in the church. That's why... I, Sometimes I've eh, called out people, uh, uh, not, in, not in public. I'll never do that, right? <clears throat> when we allow, as believers, for the world to get a grip on us, you understand what I'm saying? Okay. We're, we want to live more in the world than we want to live in the things of God. We, we want to do the things of the world more than we want. What happens, there's a firm grip that the enemy of our soul will, will get on our thoughts, and this will cause every Christian to lose their spiritual muscle because they have allowed the enemy to shoot darts into their mind. You lose your spiritual muscle. And you, th and, 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 and you think, God, what's going on? What's going on? If you just do some inventory, you'll figure out that you haven't picked up the word in a long time. And then when you want to pick it up, you're like, I really don't want to. Don't want to. And when you've come to church, the experience you used to have you don't have it anymore, and you blame everybody else. Well, it's the music, you know. If Steve was playing the drums, then I, maybe I, I feel better about it. Or, or if, 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 if Eric was playing the drums, or if Edward was playing this, or, or if, if uh, Leonard would give somebody else an opportunity on the keyboard, or you blame everybody else. Well, it's the, it's the preacher. Man, the preacher, no, man, no. But that's all I got. So stay or go, it's up to you. It's all I got, you see. But... We blame other people or other things for why we're going through what we're going through. And all we did is we turned away from a dedication and obedience to the Lord. That's all we did. Because there's a stronghold. Uh, men or women, if you open the door, pornography, 
boom, stronghold. If you open the door after God has saved you and, and gave you a new life from drugs and you just happen to, well, you know, this arthritis, ya me trae, you know. I got I to gotta get this pain off, so un toquecito no se hace nada, you know. Just every now and then, you know, every now and then, right? You open the door. That's all it is. You open the door. Start, start, men, if you, if you check out other women, whether you're single or married, you check out other women, that's lustful. You just opened a stronghold. Women too. Women too. You know what really gets me? <clears throat> so many things get me. But <clears throat> there's a lot of men. I, I praise God we have a lot of men in church. Praise God. <laughs> Brother almost got it. You guys are going, man, man. He's going, woo, 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 woo. Really. You're there, bro. You're there. Okay. Well, hold on. Hold on. Let me say something about men. See? Is that I thank God for women. They read the word. They're in church. And for so many years, it's more women than men. And I, I, I praise God that that. It's balancing out, and I'm glad. And you know why? Because the Bible declares that man is supposed to be the priest in his home. And he's supposed to be directing spiritually his family, not the other way around. I thank God for women that do. But a man, you need to stand up. You need to stand up and teach your family. You know what? We may walk in this flesh, but we don't war after the flesh. We walk after the things of God, and we walk in the spirit of God. We walk by faith and not by sight. And so that kind of gets me when, when guys don't step up. I mean, I, I always say this. I understand if, if, if the brother just gave his life to Jesus a month ago, a week ago. But you've been, if you've been serving the Lord eight months, ten, come on, dude. You know, are, what, are you slow or what? <laughs> you know, get with it. That's it. You're, you, you're called. You're, no, no. But when you're arguing with your wife, well, I'm the man. Well, you're not a man. Get the word of God and teach it to your family. And I want to be a preacher. Te teach it to your family first. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're 18 or, you know, because at 18, yeah, you know, I'm an adult. Tell this parent, I'm an adult, mom and dad. You don't tell me what to do. I better go live by yourself. I can, mom. Well, they go live by themselves and then they call them, hey, mom, can you tell dad that I need money? Tell, tell dad, mom. And, you know, moms are real soft, you know. They'll let them have it, but they'll go, I'll tell you that. And the dad will respond with, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, well, he should have listened. <laughs> you know, you let him go a little bit, right? Anyway, my pet peeve. Men need to stand up. And then you get some smarty pants. Well, I don't have a family. <laughs> so then, then just learn to, to lead yourself then. Instead of allowing the, the devil, the enemy of your soul, to lead you the way he wants to lead you and take away your spiritual muscle. Because you'll end up with a stronghold. Praise the Lord. Ephesians 6.16 says this. In addition to all these, because Paul was talking about the armor of God. In addition to all these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery darts of the devil. The fiery darts of the devil is what allows people to end up with strongholds in their thought process. That's why people don't forgive people. They don't forgive people. Because that fiery dart, boom, that's it. And then they play it over and over again. And then, and, 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 but hey, we're justifiable people. We know how to do it. We've done it since we were kids. Why'd you break the window? Well, Raymond told me to swing it. And so I swung and hit the ball. It was Raymond's fault. No, it wasn't Raymond's fault. It was your fault. See, we passed the buck. And so then we, we grow up and we want to pass the buck to everybody else. I mean, Adam tried to do it. He said, well, Lord, God, it's the wife you gave me. <laughs> it didn't work, man. Because when God told, told uh, Adam, it was Adam. When God told Adam, hey, don't eat from that tree, man. Eve wasn't created yet. His rooster went to sleep. <laughs> he was supposed to tell, uh, teach his wife. 
Anyway, the book of Revelation teaches us that there was war in the heavenlies uh, when Satan and a third of the angelic host was expelled from heaven. That was a battle. A war, if I may. And the same is true in the book of Daniel. There was a battle. There was a war. The Apostle Paul says that we are not fighting against flesh and blood, but against evil rulers, authorities of, unseen, of the unseen world, authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in the dark world, against, against evil spirits in heavenly places. That's Ephesians 6 if you want to look for it. In heavenly places. You know, that phrase heavenly places or heavenly realms, if I can say it like that, is used several times in the book of Ephesians. Let me give it to you real quick just so maybe you can jot it down. It's in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. It's in verse 20. It's in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6. It's in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 10. It's in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. That phrase, heavenly realm, is from the Greek, from the Greek, epeuronias, which means the sphere of spiritual activity. You see heavenly places? It's the sphere of spiritual activities. The devil has not given up. The Bible says that he puts blinders on the unbelievers and he tries to trip up the believers. It's up to you not to allow it. And it's all warring. It, it's all warring. The, 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 the enemy is always warring against God's people. You can be having a great day, and all of a sudden, something messes it up. Just one little thing, and you find yourself like, oh, like, oh. And, and the, maybe it's the husband that's feeling like that, and the wife is looking at him going like, what in the world happened to you? What? I mean, you were fine, or it can be the other way around. If it's the wife going through it, the husband just doesn't say nothing. Doesn't say nothing. You're supposed to. You're supposed to, hey, honey, what's the matter? Nothing. <laughs> Come on, you don't talk to me like something's a matter. You never talk to me like that. Nothing's wrong. When you wanted to have all those babies, you didn't talk to me like that. You know? <laughs> Why now? Got to speak up. Got to speak up. The devil doesn't give up. And that's why Paul says, listen, we may walk in the flesh, but we don't, war. we don't war after the flesh. And the enemy of our soul, which is Satan, he wars against God's people. Do you know, when Daniel prayed, Daniel asked in his prayer, and it took almost three weeks before he got an answer. We complain, we complain. Man, I've been praying, God hasn't answered me. This guy prayed every single day, three times a day. And it took three weeks before he even got an answer. Didn't get the, the, he, the Bible didn't tell that he got the answer at the, at the 21 days, but he got a, an answer as to why it was taking so long. I want to read it to you. Daniel chapter 10, verse 12, because I'm talking about war. War. You're, you're trying your best and you're serving God and you're staying, you're staying put in his word. You're in his house. You're in his presence. And all of a sudden, you know, you're still, there's war. Because we, we do war, not after the flesh, but we do war. Against the enemy of our soul. Daniel 10, 12 says this. Then he said, don't be afraid, Daniel. Daniel was wondering what's going on. He said, don't, don't, don't be afraid. Since the first day you began to pray for understanding and to humble yourself before God, your request has been heard in heaven. Do you see that? The minute we ask God something according to his will, he hears us. Huh. I'll give you the scripture. It's uh, 1 John Chapter 5, verse 14, and it combines with 15. Let me paraphrase it. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Amen. And if he hears us, then we have the petitions that we made of him. Go home and read it. Okay? So, they, th this angel tells, tells uh, Daniel, from the very time you requested, your prayer was heard. Let me continue. The angel says, I have come in answer to your prayer. I have come in answer to your prayer. Verse 13. Then he explains why it took so long. He said, but for 21 days, the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia blocked my way. 
That's a demonic angel. They war. Sometimes you wonder, well, why hasn't God answered me? There's war in the heavenlies, man. Because some people, if the answer doesn't come, they give up. Then they want to war in the flesh. Then they want to go back to, ah, it's not worth it. I'm just, you know, God doesn't answer me. But for 21 days, the spirit prince of king, the kingdom of Persia blocked my way. Then he says, then Michael, one of the archangels, came to help me. Check this out. And I left him there with the spirit prince of, king, of the kingdom of Persia. This angel said, you know what? I was fighting him, but I needed to get to you to give you the answer. Michael showed up. I said, hey, Michael. And I left. And Michael took care of it for me so that I could get the answer back to you. The prince of Persia in the Bible is a demonic power in Satan's army. See, there's always activity taking place in the heavenlies. Actually, this, this, uh, this uh, prince of Persia is a demonic force over what is known as uh, Iran. Isn't that something? He said, I've, I've, I've come to let you know. So we learned that there is fierce fighting in the heavenlies taking place at all times. So why shouldn't we, when we pray, war in the spirit and not give up? Because I know, you already know, 1 John 5, if we ask according to his will, he hears us. Why should we stop praying? See, this is just a glimpse that we get into the heavenly realms so that we can understand a few things. Satan and his minions, if I can say that, are actively working to prevent what? To prevent the plans of God and destroy whatever they can. They'd love to see you destroyed. They'd love to see you give up. They'd love to see you turn around and just say, you know what? The heck with Jesus. The heck with, the, the heck with prayer. The heck with worship. The heck with being in church. They'd love to see you do that. And I know some people have done that. Many of those have come back and said, man, there ain't nothing out there. There's nothing out there. John 10, 10, you know it well. I'll read it from the New Living Translation. The thief's purpose is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Jesus said, my purpose is to give you rich and satisfying life. He says, but I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Think of this. Look what it shows us. If the mighty angel of God had to stop from getting to Daniel so he could fight in the heavenlies. And the angels of God are strong. How was it that a demonic angel was able to hold him? He wasn't holding him like we would hold each other. He was taking his attention away. He was fighting. He was warring with him. There's, and, and because he, these guys used to be in heaven. These, these demonic angels used to be in heaven. They were, they were cast out. When Satan was cast out, he, he, he convinced them. And so he was detained. The demons that, that fight in the heavenlies do have great power. And so just remember, they used to be in God's army. But those angels do not have something we have. And we have... Jehovah God on our side. And we have his son Jesus interceding for us. And we have the power of the Holy Spirit living in us. Ah, that's why Michael showed up. It's, it's, it's a view into what we can do through him. Michael shows up, tells him, I'll take care of this guy. When we're dealing with stuff, Lord, thank you. Now, please remember this. In Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14, it says that the ministering spirits are, are for the heirs of salvation. The ministering spirits are the angels. Okay? Don't go around saying, I have a guardian angel. They're, they're, listen, they're just angels. We don't worship them. We don't look for them. They're not visible. But they, they do stuff on our behalf. Hebrews 1 14, the ministering spirits. They minister to you and me without us even knowing. We don't need to know them. We just know Jesus. We know God. We know the Holy Spirit. You see, so 
we go through, and, and, and you're going through this, through, this, uh, through this battle, whatever it may be, you're praying, interceding for something in your home, in your life, a family member, a son, a daughter, etc. cetera, and, and, and it's like, man, it's not moving forward. But you know, you know, Lord, you're taking care of it for me because although I walk in the flesh, I don't war after the flesh. Amen? Amen. There's one thing. Again, look at the angel that left Mike, Michael, the archangel, fighting with the demonic angel. The other angel comes to Daniel and tells him, hey, you wanted understanding, you humbled yourself before God, and I'm here to tell you you're going to get understanding. It just took me 21 days because of war in the heavenlies. There was a song in the 80s, war in the heavens, there's war in the heavenlies. I think Ron Canoli did it, and it's, it's just gorgeous. But, but here's the thing. Always remember this. The Lord Jesus, our Father in heaven, will never leave his children because when we're saved, in Christ is our Lord and Savior, the Bible says in John 1, it says that John uh, 1, uh, 11, 12, right in there. It says that when, when we receive him, he gives us the power to become his sons and daughters, his children. Okay? I want you to remember this. Here's one thing you can always count on. The Lord never leaves his children defenseless against the evil of the enemy. Amen? Never. Let me show it to you. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 Verse 4, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You deal with a stronghold, you can pull it down. You have the authority. You have the authority. It's part of our weapons of our warfare. God has given it to us. Okay? Only the believer has it. The believer that is walking with the Lord. Verse 5. Casting down imaginations, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Jesus Christ. Understand we're in a spiritual war. It's a battle for our minds. The enemy wants to take our minds. He wants to mess with us. So take, take the command that the Lord gives us to renew your mind with his word. Take it seriously. See, some think all I have to do is think positive. Po positively renewing your mind is not about being positive an unbeliever can be positive it's not about being i'm not fat i'm not fat i'm not fat i'm not gaining weight mira carne de tortillas de harina arroz i'm not fat i'm not fat i'm i'm, I'm positive i'm positive i'm positive i'm not fat and then your clothes don't fit you were positively wrong It's not about just being positive. It's about renewing your mind. And you renew your mind in his word. Amen. And you got to take it seriously. Amen? Amen. See, we have the power for anything that comes into your mind that wants you to think that it's higher than God. You have the power to pull it down and say, you're not bigger than God. You're not higher than God. You're not stronger than God. My God, my God is a true God. Amen. Amen. And so we're told exactly what armor we need to use to stand firm against the temptations and the schemes of the devil. See, in ourselves, we're no match for Satan device, Satan's devices. We're no match. An alcoholic, a lot of them, I thank God, have overcome. Uh, Ex-drug addicts, they've overcome. Adulterers, they've overcome. Gangbangers, they overcome. But for some, for... for as they begin to walk, you, let me talk about alcoholics. You can't put a drink in front of them or next to them because it's like it's the biggest temptation in the world. All right? It's the biggest temptation. For somebody that was addicted to drugs, you can't get them around stuff that, that, that drugs are easily available. But boom, they're going to fall because they're, they're just getting their footing. And I can go on and on with the rest of the things, but I think you get my idea what, what, uh, what, what I'm saying. See, on our, on our own, we're no match for Satan's devices. But with God's help, we are more than what? We are more than conquerors. Amen? So I said that we are told what we need to overcome. It doesn't matter what, what the thought process is. It doesn't matter what is keeping you down. You, you hate somebody. Shame on you. You want to get back at somebody really bad. Shame, shame on you. You can't forgive somebody. Come on. If you were on the other hand, if it was, if it was you that needed forgiveness, you'd, you'd want it from that person. 
envision this or imagine this, that we go before God the day that we give our life to Jesus and say, Lord, will you please forgive me of all my sins? And he would say, no. Where would we be? Where would we? Had the pastor that the evangelist that made the altar call when Tommy and I gave our life to Jesus, had he come up to it and say, hey, listen, he's forgiving everybody else, but not you guys because you guys went too far. Can you imagine that? What a defeated sense of feeling we would have. So we're forgiven. As hard as it is at times, we pray, Lord, will you help me forgive that person? Will you help me forgive that person? Because I, I, you know, we're supposed to love people because we're believers and God loves us. But sometimes you're not at that point where you can just love a person. So the Lord says, then love them the way I loved you. He died for me and you. And this helps us. This helps us to get over those things. We're told what, what, we, need to, what we need to use. If he, some of you know this, but, but I, I need to repeat it. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 11. This is what you need to be that overcomer. This is what you need to break strongholds. Do you know there's people that their stronghold, they're great people, they're great people, but their stronghold is anger. Anger. I was a lot of things. Not proud of it. I was a lot of things. And did a lot of things that not proud of. Never will be. And they're under the blood. But one of those things was anger. Oh, vicious anger would come over me. Ugly. Ugly. But when I gave my life to Jesus, he started to work on that. You've heard this. I'm not going to repeat it. But you've heard the story about the door. At my house at the door fell. Remember that? Okay. That was, part of the, that was part of the anger that was still brewing in me. Who hasn't heard the story? Raise your hand. Okay, I have a CD for sale that tells you the story. Okay. Or a, or a, or a, little, a little USB. Okay. <laughs> it tells you the story. Okay. But some people have such an anger, it messes up everything about their life. Everything. I mean, I didn't even like me. I didn't like me. And the Bible says, well, you're supposed to love yourself. Well, I didn't know what the Bible said. I was lost. But I didn't, <laughs> I didn't like me. How could I love me? I love when people say, well, you know what? Uh, I love you, but I don't like you. Shut up. That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> They're just wanting to break up with you. <laughs> I mean, just get it. Get it, okay? Get it. Because the devil's going to mess with you there, and you're going to have to get victory over that. Anyway. Ephesians 6, 11, put on the whole armor of God, that you'll be able to stand against all the tricks of the devil. Verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. 13. Wherefore, take up your whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand the evil day. And having done all to stand, I love verse 14, it says stand. Which means every, once you've done everything you can do, guess what? You're standing, remain standing. Amen? You may, live, you may live in this flesh, but you don't war after the flesh. Stand therefore, having your loins girded with the truth. It's just talking about, you know, they would, what, what those people would do, they had, they had long, the soldiers had long, um, uh, <laughs> would call them. They, they had long clothes and they had to run so what they would do they would pick it up and they would tie the belt they were girding their loins so they could run and not trip okay what does that tell us you know if we have the truth of God in our life whether we walk or run we won't trip because we've got his truth in us his Holy Spirit will remind us of that then it says and having on the breastplate of righteousness and that tells us that our heart has to be right with God and has to stay right with God. It has, we need to be honest with ourselves. In 1984, I had to come clean with myself. And I literally looked in the mirror and I told myself what I was and why I needed Jesus. I had to, I had to confront me. <laughs> you sound like you were crazy. Maybe I was. Maybe I was. But I had to confront myself. I had a good friend, he was mentally handicapped. 
and he had to say, and he'd look at you and he'd go, loco que, he would tell us. He would tell us that, loco que. And so we learned, I guess estoy loco. Anyway. Verse 15. Your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. In other words, everywhere we go, we're going to bring peace with us. We're going to bring peace with us. 16. Above all, take the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to stop or quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Not only the devil, but the wicked. Anyone that wants to talk about you, make remarks about you, say lies about you, whatever it is, you've got the shield of faith. Amen? Amen. 17. Take the helmet of salvation. Man, that's, man, you just put it right here. In other words, what we're doing is we saturate ourselves with God's word and nothing can penetrate. See, there's, there's people that nothing penetrates, but they're not even saved. They're, they're stubborn. I'm talking about someone that has surrendered life to Jesus and that, you know what? I've got the helmet of salvation. I'm saved and I'm not going to let it, because I'm renewing my mind, I'm going to let anything go in. Amen. 17 says, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Now, this is how we war. We use the sword of the spirit. We take the word of God and we, we audibly, we learn it, we speak it over situation, circumstances. Amen. And we get the victory. Glory to God. Come on, team. There are forces unknown to us that may interfere with God's desire to aid us. God wants to help us. There's forces you cannot see that are trying to uh, uh, block that, as I explained about the, the angel and the king of Persia. Continue to persevere in prayer. When, when we know that we can, we can overcome all of this stuff, and when we know that there is spiritual battle going on, and we know that the thief comes only but to kill, steal, and steal, and to destroy. He wants to destroy us. Then when we begin to renew our mind and do the things that God tells us to do, we'll be more careful about what we say and what we do. See, don't forget, by ourselves, we cannot do it. But with the Lord, all things are possible. Amen? So here's, here's the advice Paul gives, and I want to share it with you. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15. So be careful how you live. See, some people don't care how they live. They come to church, they listen, but they don't allow the Spirit of God to draw them to Jesus. They just don't. It says, don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. This is God's Word telling us, be wise. Verse 16, make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Man, you can pray for somebody, pray with somebody, you better do it. Speak to somebody about Jesus. Tell them. People will come to you and they'll want to dump stuff upon you and just all their worries or problems, stuff like that. You know what? Go, let them. Let them. You just be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. That's all. And as they're dumping, man, I'm going through this. I want to end it. I want to end it. I can't help it. And, and you, you be praying in the spirit. You listen. You can pray in the spirit. And the spirit of God will tell you exactly what to tell them. Exactly what to tell them. And it'll make a difference in their life. Make the most of every opportunity in these old days. Verse 17, don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Everybody, the majority of people that I speak to, they want to preach. I had one guy come tell me, hey, I need to preach here. Well, I'm sorry, there's already a preacher. I said, sorry. When I die, maybe, I don't know, but. No, he wanted to come preach. But I read this. Understand what the Lord wants you to do. Had a pastor that would tell me. I was already in full-time ministry. He would tell me. Uh, pastor Arnold, um, go outside to the parking lot, sweep it. And the first time he told me that, I went like, I, I, I used to be running a multi-million dollar school. And, and that corporate, I was top notch. And now I'm in full-time ministry. They go sweep, go sweep the parking lot. said, you'll go sweep the parking lot. <laughs> Even my voice changed in serio, what to, you know. 
And I thought about it a little while. It was just like I felt a nudge. Can't explain it. Just felt a nudge. I was new. And I said, okay. There was no blowers. There was a broom. And I'd pick up the leaves, and the wind would come, and here comes more leaves. I look in the window. He was in his, uh, at his desk. He made me do that, I don't know, for months. Every so many weeks, I'd go sweep, the, go sweep over there. Go sweep. You know what I started doing? He didn't have to tell me anymore. It was time I'd see the leaves. I'd grab the broom. The broom. Let's go. Do it. The tiles were crooked. They were messy. Whatever. I'd get up on something. I'd, I'd change them. Straighten them out. I'm not telling you to, to, to pat myself on the back. God was teaching me something the hard way. As I was renew, help, allowing him to renew my mind, I was learning. Uh, I know what you want me to do. You want me to learn how to serve. Easter Sunday, something happened. I want to pick on people tonight. <laughs> like I don't know, ever pick on people. <clears throat> so my wife and I had just got, we had ministered in a mission with Pastor Ozuna on Friday. Holy Friday. And we came in Saturday late. And so we had our sunrise service. So I drive up. And it's dark. I noticed my car was acting a little funny. And right after church, we walk out, and there's a flat tire. I have a flat tire in the car. And I go, wow. So Chris come, Pastor Chris comes out, and he stands next to me, and he's doing this too. <laughs> yeah. Brother Johnny comes out. He says, what happened? I said, I got a flat tire. I said, wow. And Johnny says, well, we take it somewhere? I don't know. What's going to be open right now? Who was the last one that came out? Somebody else came out. There was somebody. Who else? Noe. Noe. Yeah, Noe. Yeah. Well, it, well, I have a, I have a, a co air compressor. Well, go get it, man. And we're standing there waiting for Noe, and then he comes back. He says, "Well, I don't have the chuck." Oh, see, I said. Tommy was inside with all the wives, and she said, how many Mexicans does it take to change a tire, man? <laughs> you should, we, Javier, you work for the city, right? We look like the city. Four of us just standing there like this. We look like the city when Tino came out. Tino came out, he said, okay, bro, you know Tino. Hey, God bless you, my brother. Hey, pastor, God bless you. <laughs> you ever seen a cat? If you have a cat and you put something that wasn't there before and he walks into your house, he goes. <laughs> that was Tino. Brother Tino. He walked by. Hey, brother, God bless you. God bless you, my pastor. You got a flat tire? I said, yeah. He says, pull out the jack. Give me the jack. Give me the jack. Give me the jack. Come on. Here. Nobody, we're all like bumping into each other. <laughs> I think Chris was going in circles. Chris, you know, <laughs> and by the time you know it, by the time you know it, Brother Tino gave Brother Chris the start to take off the, the lugs. He goes, here, go. And Chris looks like, what? I'm saying, I don't know. <laughs> and Brother Tino's going at it. And I tell him, I, I think you're supposed to move it a little bit over. Yeah, I, just, you know, I need to be helpful, right? And they changed it out, and they put, you know, he changed it out, him and Chris and, and stuff like that, right? And so for that moment, they knew what to do. We always have to know what to do. That's what the scripture says. Understand what the Lord would have you do in a moment, in an instant. You have to know, you have to know what, what to do. And if you stay in God's word, you'll always know what to do. You'll know what to do. Sometimes some of you that have had the habit that you love to cuss people out because you get angry, and you'll know what to do the next time you feel anger coming over you. You're like, you're still thinking them, but you're getting better. Okay? You got to continue to, continue to, man, there's a lot of brothers pointing at their wives. I don't, I'm not even going to say who they are. 
We need to know what he wants us to do. And then verse 18 says, don't be drunk with wine. I don't do wine, I do coke. It doesn't matter. He's talking about the same thing. If I had read, I would say, don't be stupid, you know. He says, because it will ruin your life. So what do we learn? We know, listen, make sure you push every opportunity to the fullest. Live, be careful how you live. Don't be like fools. Be wise. He says, know what I want you to do. And don't let other things get you drunk and away from me because it will ruin your life. And then he says, but here's what I want you to do. Instead of all that, I want you to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit would lead us, guide us, counsel, and comfort us. And he will even convict us if he has to. Because when there is a stronghold, we're going to have to be relying on him. It's not about me being able to overcome the stronghold. It's him. What we have to do is say, Lord, forgive me. Because, you know, I'm, nobody knows this, but I'm still doing this. And I'm still doing that. And I just need to ask you to forgive me. And he'll do it. And then you begin to renew your mind. The situation at hand is that many times people come to church and nobody mentions some of the things that they've been doing or hiding. And we have to mention it when the Spirit of God says to mention it so that somebody can come to the altar and say, Lord, here I am. <laughs> nobody knows, but you know. Nobody knows, but you know. And I need, I, need to, I need to be free right now in Jesus' name. And he will do it. He will do it. So there's, there's Bible... The Bible names several weapons for pulling down the stronghold and waging war. They include the Word of God. We need it. Prayer. We need it. Demonstration of love and humility. Get that one. Demonstration of love and humility. We need the armor of God that Paul just... Just, I just read what Paul wrote. We need the power of the Holy Spirit of God working in our life. But here's the key. As Paul demonstrates in Corinthians. We must rely on God's divine power, not on ours. So strongholds can be bad. But I want to show you a stronghold that is good. In the book of Nahum. Chapter 1, verse 7. The Lord is good. A stronghold. A stronghold in the day of trouble. See, the enemy wants to bring us down with a stronghold. Imagine a wrestling match. That's why Paul said we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. But the Lord gives us a stronghold. How does he do that? By giving us refuge. By giving us power. Because he is our place of safety, of protection. He is so faithful. The psalmist writes in Psalm 91, He that abides in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The word shadow in the Hebrew text is defense. So if we're under his shadow, in a secret place, that's our prayer time. He's our defense. Man, the fiery dart comes. We have his word. We have the shield. We have the sword. We have the breastplate. But we have to know what he wants us to do. What does he want us to do? If there is something that we're holding back, but he already knows. And it's keeping us from renewing our mind. It's keeping us from being the person he wants us to be. We best tell him. So we can get the victory and we get the breakthrough. I don't think anybody should criticize anybody. Of course, we're not going to tell anybody, but you, this is between you and God. Because you may come up here for a totally different reason. Lord, I'm here. You know, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. I just need healing. Or Lord, you know, I just need peace because I'm going through a situation. But here's the thing. Maybe somebody knows you and, they, oh, uh, Arnold's up there because, you know, he's got this bad anger stuff. And uh, he, he, now he's trying to clear it up. Nobody should criticize anybody. Nobody should. Because what happens to one person today may happen to another person the next. There's a reason why it says don't spit up. What's that song say? You don't, you don't step on Superman's, Superman's cape? 
and you don't spit into the wind, it hits you back. That's not scripture, but some of you are looking for it. It's not scripture. <laughs> but there's things in your life, because I had them. There's things in your life that you just need to tell the Lord, Lord, why do I run? You already know. If it's changed my filthy mouth, it's not your mouth. He'll, he'll, he'll clean it up. It's your thought process. This is an example. Lord, change my anger. Get rid of my anger. Yeah, it comes here. Okay? So the altar is open. Because he is a stronghold. God is a stronghold in the day of trouble. And he wants to give you the refuge that only he can give you. So that no stronghold can get a hold of you and keep you down. So that the thief cannot come to kill, steal, and destroy. He want, God wants to be your stronghold in your day of trouble. Hallelujah. Those of you watching tonight, thank you so much for staying up with us. And uh, you may, right there where you're at, you may also need to take care of some business with the Father. I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus. That the Lord would help you to overcome. And all you have to do where you're at is to let him know, Lord. This is my dilemma. You already know it, but I confess it. I'm saved by your grace. But a stronghold in my head just doesn't, doesn't allow me to, to overcome. So I confess it right now. Just tell him, forgive me, Father. Through your Holy Spirit, through the blood of Jesus, help me overcome. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen.